and welcome. My name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM videos, so if you enjoy that sort of content, you might want to consider subscribing. Today's video, we are diving into the gift exchange that comes around once a year. I'm talking Secret Sisters. If you would like to support this type of content and me as a creator, I've created three tiers in my Patreon. They are all very reasonable, ranging from $1 to $10 a month, and literally any amount helps. It will help me improve sound quality, just getting, you know, just getting better overall at the whole video creation thing. And now, let's get to the video. And now for a quick disclaimer. This video is based on my research, experience, and opinions. It is intended for entertainment purposes. Please do your own research. You are always welcome to use the sources I list in my video description. Dr. Larry Siegel is a criminologist and he lectured about the history of scammers recently. According to him, white collar crime can be as high as $600 billion per year. In his lecture, he discussed Charles Ponzi, who is the one and only person who now has an entire scheme named after him, the Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is a form of fraud that lures investors and pays profits to earlier investors with funds that are received from the more recent investors. Dr. Siegel also discussed other forms of fraud, including Medicare, tax, property and embezzlement, adoption scams, religious swindles, pyramid schemes, and telemarketer scams. In giving such presentations, there's one question that just basically hangs over the audience. Why do these individuals of high society do this? According to Dr. Siegel, it comes down to four words, greed, need, impulsivity, and culture. For greed, that's because some people want to take shortcuts and sometimes what they have isn't enough. In terms of need, this can be financial or psychological and a way to improve people's lives no matter what the consequences are. Impulsivity. People are not thinking about the consequences of their actions. Some act when they see that there is an opportunity. And then culture. That whole, you know, nature, nurture sort of thing. People learn from their peers and elders. Their location and culture around them influences their world view. When it comes to this type of gift exchange, I believe these four factors are in play. I'm not here to replicate the beautiful work that Savannah Marie did because she created an amazing video that really gives you all the ins and outs of this entire secret sister scam. And I will put a link to her video in the description and hopefully I'll put up a card with, you know, a link to that too, if I can figure out how to do that. The thing is, these types of posts will get eyeballs on them on social media. People will comment, I'm in. But then other people may also comment that, you know, I tried this last year and it didn't work. So let's check out some of the social media posts that maybe you've seen something like this, you know, this year. Maybe you saw something like this last year. Another variation has popped up in the form of a wine exchange. Now, to be clear, this is the same as Secret Sisters. It just has you giving wine instead of giving other gifts. According to the Better Business Bureau, these type of gift exchanges are digital chain letters, which makes them illegal scams. 
The U.S. Postal Inspector says chain letters are a form of gambling. That is illegal if they request money or other items of value and promise a substantial return to the participants. In 2015, the Attorney General of North Carolina stated there are red flags with this type of gift exchange. One of the big concerns is that by signing up for this, your name and address could get into the wrong hands. Now, I've never done this type of gift exchange, and this year, over on some um, anti-MLM subreddit, there was a post about it, you know, about promoting a gift exchange. I called it out, and the post is now deleted. Now, as I said, I've never participated in this, but I found some different forms about secret sister things that I'm presuming that you then fill this type of stuff out so people can quote, get you the type of gift that you want. But you know, I can totally see someone who doesn't have any family or friends to spend the holiday with getting caught up in this, you know? Someone who doesn't get presents, but might get presents for others, but spend the holidays alone. Does that make sense? Imagine giving your information, your personal information, giving that away freely online. And I know there are groups that are out there that maybe you're a member of and you think that you know the people. And I get that, but you don't know them in real life. So why risk giving away your personal information? And to me, I think it just boils down to trusting people and also feeling lonely. Something that I find to be basically equally as worrisome is that you can do a search on Google and get all kinds of like gift ideas for the secret sister. There's even Pinterest boards for it. You can search on Etsy and there will be ideas for your secret sister gift exchange. And I think the one that gets to me the most is Amazon. Because, you know, when you see these sorts of things, imagine if you are someone who decided to participate in this and you see these ideas all over the place, especially on Amazon that's going to kind of like legitimize the whole thing and draw people in more because they're like, well, there's on Amazon, it's on Etsy, I see Pinterest boards. Do you see what I mean? And I find that to be very problematic. So let me show you some of the things you can find on Amazon all about this secret sister gift exchange. So you might be wondering, why am I so concerned about this? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a story time. Number one, this really does concern me for people who may not have friends or family to spend the holidays with. And it hits home very much so because there was a time when I really didn't have anybody that I spent the holidays with. And I'm not the kind of person who's going to go up to people and go like, hey, you know, I'm single. Hey, you know, I don't have any family. Hey, you know, I'm going to be alone on the holidays. That's just not my style. So think about that. There's probably people that you know, and they're going to be alone this holiday season. And let me tell you, it feels really crappy when you're alone. And one of the things is, is during this time period, this is when there's the highest rate of suicide in the year. So when people are alone like this on the holidays, it can be terribly depressing. And it was terribly depressing for me for many, many years. And like I said, I didn't say anything to anyone because I didn't feel like I really should. I felt like people knew that I was single. People knew that I didn't have extended family that I could just like go and have Christmas with. People knew my backstory on all of that stuff. People just don't think about it. And let me give you an example of people not thinking about this. Maybe you've participated in 
the white elephant, you know, gift exchange thing in the office? I know I have. And when I did, I was very thoughtful about whatever gift that I did get. And it's not like I spent, you know, tons of money because there's always like some kind of cap on it or something. But I did get something with some care. And, I, you know, I didn't want to just get some crappy little gift for someone because I was thinking there's someone in the room like me that's going to be alone on the holiday. And the only gift that they're going to get this year is whatever they get at this little office white elephant exchange. And let me tell you, inevitably, I always got a really crappy gift. And everyone was having great merriment about, you know, the gift exchange and just laughing it up. No one is ever thinking that there could be someone who is absolutely alone. And wouldn't it be nice if we could give something to them that at least isn't crappy? So I'm going to offer you this. Whenever a holiday rolls around, and I'm not talking about just Christmas, literally year around, whenever a holiday comes around, reach out to people that you know are single, maybe they're recently divorced, maybe they're recently widowed, but people that you know who do not have, you know, brothers, sisters, children, that they're basically by themselves to make sure that they are going to have people around them, or at least have the option to go somewhere. That is something that I think is really important to do. Please be careful out there because, you know, not everyone is loving and kind the way you are, the way that I am. And people are out there taking advantage of others. That's why I am exposing MLMs for what they are and also various other scams. Now, going into the new year, I will be looking more into the darker side. I've started looking into the dark side of MLM, but I also want to look at the peripheral type things. You know, people who are offering courses and coaching opportunities and all this sort of stuff that really is targeting people in MLMs because none of that stuff is going to work. It just isn't. But you keep thinking, maybe this person is going to give me the secret sauce. They don't have it. All they're doing is scamming you out of money. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, rode the pony, did all of that. And so I want you to learn from my experience so that you don't go down that road. Or if you see somebody going down that road, at the very least, you might be able to warn them. But I will say, because of cognitive dissonance, you may come up against a roadblock. When there's cognitive dissonance, that means you already have a belief structure built and trying to break through that barrier is really challenging. But again, this is why I want to kind of dive into some of this darker stuff because people don't think about these things and how it's happening when you get involved in MLM or when you get involved with, you know, other types of scams as well. If you enjoy anti-MLM content, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are about the video. I appreciate the time that you spend with me, and I want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. If you have had an experience with an MLM, there is a link in my video description to help you file with the FTC. It's our stories and us at a grassroots level that I think is really going to make a difference in terms of scammers and, you know, the MLM scheme. And remember, change starts now.